from the grand strategic aspect it would make considerable common sense for china to exploit the window of opportunity of the russia ukraine war and strike at taiwan when the americans and the nato are fully preoccupied in your as a precedent don't forget that in 1962 china had similarly exploited the cuban missile crisis between united states and the soviet union to attack india and quickly achieve its tactical operational aims so there was speculation that the chinese might do it as i stated in an earlier episode that the chinese initially held back because the russian military performance in the attack was poor and it gave a clear indication that with the current state of the art in technology defense had become the stronger form of war and uh, attack was becoming rather difficult as it had happened towards the end of the second world war and also in the yom kippur arab israeli war we found that the defensive operation of war had gained much more preeminence over attack operations or offensive operations which were becoming extremely costly china had to attack across 80 to 120 miles plus of the sea and therefore the it ran a very high risk of a very costly political and military failure almost virtually amounting to disaster so initially china was cowed down and the united states went into a triumphalist phase in which nancy pelosi and other series of american visitors you know made a beeline for taiwan almost to rub china's nose in the ground now however the battle situation in ukraine has changed considerably after russia mobilized carried out a partial mobilization last september the whole scenario has changed there is a visible stasis which is coming through there and russia has clearly gained the upper hand the chinese have drawn their lessons and they are speeding up the preparations for a possible assault oblique blockade operation amphibious assault oblique blockade operation against taiwan would such an attack to come or be imminent there would be clear battle indications at the strategic operational and tactical level and starting at the strategic level we are already getting some very clear very disturbing battle indications let me list them one by one now the strategic battle indicators are one china started selling its us treasury bonds extremely significant we all know that russia had built up a war chest of 600 billion dollars worth of forex reserves almost about 350 billion dollars of which were in american and european banks now the moment the war started the united states simply seized these 350 billion dollars worth of uh, uh, of russian foreign exchange reserves which were there in terms of us treasury bonds so if china wants to avoid such a situation if it attacks uh, taiwan one of the first indicators would be that it would start selling us treasury bonds and this has created alarm in washington leading to treasury secretary yellen to make a beeline for beijing and virtually plead with the chinese not to sell their us treasury bonds second is about 8 tons of gold they have purchased recently in the month of april now we all know that the one of the strategies to counter you know Amer- american economic sanctions is to build up the gold reserves try and weaken the dollar you know the other major kind of a battle indication at the strategic level is the huge food reserve stocks that china is building up 
right? China imports 40 percent of its food and requirements and, you know, it has 20 percent of the world's food reserve stocks. Now, when COVID happened, we know how India dished out, you know, dipped into its food reserve stock to feed the population during the lockdowns. China had such severe lockdown, but it has not touched its food reserves. It is trying to save them for a contingency in the future, which is, which is alarming, which is really, really alarming that uh, China did not touch, very significant, China did not touch its food reserve stocks during the emergency of COVID. Is it anticipating a greater emergency than COVID? where it is, uh, you know, shoring up its food stocks for. The next indicator is defensive preparations on the mainland, building of underground bunkers, you know, shelters, etc. This is also a significant indication. Then is the fact, the most alarming of them, I would reckon as a military analyst, is the fact that China is building up its blood banks. It has been, you know, selling uh, political credit ratings to people, uh, social security ratings to people who are donating blood. That means it is trying to build up its blood reserves, stockpiles in the anticipation of major casualties in an offensive. Don't forget that when Russia had attacked Ukraine, in the month of February last year, it had started building up its blood bank reserves in Feb uh, January, February 22, just a month prior to the war. So this building up of blood reserve stocks and, uh, you know, because you do them just before the kind of an offensive, this is a very disturbing kind of an indicator which has emerged from China. Next point is rhetoric. Every time that the Chinese attack, when they attacked us in 1962, when they fought the Amur Asuri clashes with Russia in 1967, you know, there was a bellicose build-up of rhetoric in the Chinese press, Chinese media, as also official statements by the Chinese leadership. There have been six bellicose speeches, very bellicose speeches asking the Chinese armed forces to get ready for war, for a do or die kind of a conflict, which have been made by no less than Xi Jinping himself. The next operational level battle indicators come in terms of the number and nature of military exercises, military preparations for war. Now, there have been three significant exercises that the Chinese armed forces have held in relation to Taiwan. Uh, the first of them was in August last year when Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan. The Chinese had then held a 10-day long joint sword exercise to uh, simulate the blockade of Taiwan. They practiced blockading Taiwan, which is, I think, a very likely Chinese military option because you know, you don't really have to stick your neck out and attack. You are more or less on the defensive to take on the third party intervention by the United States, which is a given. And you are then on the defensive and you are forcing the other side to attack. That means in terms of modern technology, what we have seen in the Russia-Ukraine war, the lesson learnt is, that the defensive is the far cheaper, easier form of war to adopt. It, it inflicts disproportionate casualties upon the attacker and you conserve your strength. So, uh, you know, they could also kind of a, do a blockade, absorb the uh, American counter-reaction, try and strike the American carrier battle groups who are coming to intervene with their Dongfeng 21 series of intermediate range ballistic missiles, etc., with their aircraft, with their drones, long-range drones. And then, having done that, if they feel they have gained a favorable situation and chances of American intervention uh, have been either deterred 
or uh, you know uh, uh, stymied then the chinese could even go on to phase 2 in terms of an amphibious assault so they practiced this kind of a scenario of a blockade in august last year in april this year when president tsai wen of taiwan visited the united states china launched its second major exercise joint fire sword where they practiced gaining air and naval supremacy in and around taiwan in the straits over the straits over the island of taiwan they made the chinese navy and the pla air force made a uh, uh, practice runs for how to gain air and naval supremacy in the battle space area in august this year the vice president of taiwan visited the united states and in retaliation the russian or uh, the chinese have launched their third major uh, uh, exercise once again this is devoted to uh, gaining air and naval supremacy over the taiwan straits and the island of taiwan the most crucial battle indicator will come with a final rehearsal exercise of an amphibious assault many american commentators believe that they are looking for this final exercise which will be a clear indication that the chinese armed forces think they are now ready to assault and they will rehearse that kind of an assault and don't forget when you keep doing these kind of exercises you desensitize the enemy it is difficult for the enemy to make out whether the mobilization is for an exercise or for an actual attack so uh, these exercises then uh, serve a double purpose one of course they help in time, you know in uh, in absolutely rehearsing the roles that you have to carry out in war and number two they act to enhance the deception value in such a predictable scenario the only way to you cannot avoid concentrations and all concentrations of forces can easily be picked up from satellite and drones so you have to then mask intentions the intentions are masked by the set of exercises an amphibious assault is a very tricky difficult operation there are only certain meteorological windows of launch which are available in the year due to the sea state etc the tidal conditions that limits the windows of attack and there are just three preferable windows of attack if the chinese want to launch an amphibious assault against taiwan april may august generally so far it was anticipated that it was only by 2027 that the chinese armed forces would be fully ready their third carrier battle group would be fully operational they are already increasing the number of nuclear warheads from 350 to about 1500 they have increased the number of icbm launchers from 150 to 350 you know a whole lot of preparations are under foot they are planning to build more uh, you know amphibious assault uh, ships etc naval preparations etc being done so uh, it was anticipated that they would be ready to assault by 2027 then it was slightly preponed there is some talk of 2025 now with these battle indication it could even be earlier so earlier means how much earlier one can stick one neck out and say that the earliest could be you know august is almost past this year so this window is more or less closing but next year we have the window in april in may in august you know and the same time frame we can look in 2025 so 2024 2025 seems to be the window of launch the ukraine war is likely to continue in fits and starts there may be a decisive phase locally now but next year the year after that if the americans and nato still have appetite for making a uh, fighting russia to the last ukrainian and they want to pump in further weapons further ammunition well then there could be continuation of these 
and these could then be coordinated between the Russians and the Chinese. I mean, they could almost coordinate their attacks to coincide. And the best window of launch for coinciding is August. Because from the meteorological point of view, it suits both sides. So, August would be the month to watch, whether next year or the year after that, when they could both do something simultaneously, possibly in conjunction with provocations by North Korea, in conjunction with provocations by Iran. It could be quite a concerted kind of a geopolitical grand strategic scenario created to put the Americans on the back foot with a real two-front war. There was much bellicose talk in the United States initially that they were ready for a two-month, uh, for a two-front war. I'm, I'm afraid that is not true. Uh, industrially, industrial mobilization-wise, the Americans are in no position to undertake a two-front war beyond the first one or two weeks. There would be serious problems that would arise. That is why Henry Kissinger himself had gone to Beijing. He is highly respected in Beijing because he is the architect of the US-China Deta, which was a master stroke in the 1971 war uh, era. This has now totally been negated and Henry Kissinger's maxim to the United States was never to take on more than one Asian power at a time. Will Russia and China try and create this situation for the United States? We will get the answer next year or the year after that. Would it be in our grand strategic interest? When China is engaged with Taiwan, in pure military terms, whether it is going to happen or not happen remains to be seen, but in pure military terms, it would be to India's military advantage to settle its problem with China in that window, when China is heavily engaged in Taiwan. Uh, otherwise, if we miss this window, China will deal with its adversaries in one by one, which is very advantageous to China, extremely disadvantageous to India, to Japan, to Taiwan and all other, uh, Vietnam, all other countries which are threatened by China in the Asian landmass and in the Indian Ocean, Pacific Indian Ocean region. So, uh, we need to think through very carefully. We cannot have knee-jerk reactions to, because the leaders are meeting, let's aim for peace with China. Uh, peace at what cost? Peace at what consequences? Will we all, you know, uh, decide that if China does decide to attack Taiwan, will we, the, the sole thing India can do is create tensions, enhance tensions on the border, perhaps launch an offensive to limited offensive to regain Aksai Chin and uh, thereby take some pressure off Taiwan, take some pressure off Japan and just by posturing, you can tie down substantial amount of Chinese force levels. Uh, in case we miss that window of opportunity, the disadvantage, strategic disadvantage will accrue to India. So, we have to think these things very carefully. But what I am trying to highlight in this presentation is that there are disturbing battle indications that China is trying to advance the timeline it had set for itself for an attack on Taiwan. Whether that starts as a blockade, my personal gut feel is that it is more likely. There are also speculations of an attack on some of the small islands or the large island, but which is of no point. It just alerts the world, gets you all the uh, adverse consequences and gains you nothing. It gains you nothing. So, therefore, the only viable options for China are one, a blockade option, number two, a amphibious assault option to take Taiwan by force. The timeline for that in my reckoning, given all these battle indicators, early battle indicators and fairly late battle indications like building up of blood banks, those are worrisome and we must, the world will have to take that into account. The Quad nations will have to take that 
into account. Thank you.